Hello, this is the virtual design day video for Team 19056 High Definition Aircraft Video Stitching. Our team sponsor is Megit, located here in Oro Valley, and our mentor is David Gilbel. Our team consists of five members listed here, though you will only be hearing from myself, Kira Purbin, and our ECE expert, Alawi. All team members contributed to the overall success of this project. In order to narrate our team's project, I will be going through the project's poster by section and supplementing those explanations with further diagrams and relevant information. I will be going through our content quickly, so please pause the video if you need to. First, I will be starting with an introduction of our project's description and objective. To describe our project, we first need to describe what Megat does as a company and what they were looking for from our group. Megat currently sells a system which mounts two wide field of view cameras, named left and right vertical stabilizing cameras, onto the thin fiber aircraft as the diagram to the right suggests. Being able to view these two video streams in a single stitch video output rather than as two separate videos would allow the pilot a better perspective when taxiing around airports. Megat's two cameras encompass a 180 degree field of view from their positions on the fin. Our team's original objective was to create a software which would take two video streams from these two cameras and stitch them together into a single wide field of view video. We would also correct for fisheye distortions to the cameras and project a distance overlay over each of the plane's wings. Unfortunately, our team was not able to use the actual video from Megat's own system, meaning that we were not able to use footage from plane or from, from correctly oriented cameras. Our team then altered its project plan to use two GoPro cameras to obtain video streams and then creating MATLAB software which would correct which would correct for fisheye distortion and stitch two videos together. While not written to the unique perspective of the cameras and Megat system, the software would still be beneficial to Megat as it provides a baseline code from which they can build upon. When looking at how our team approached a problem, looking at the evolution of our system block diagram highlights our approach. First, it was necessary for our team to understand the system Megat used since we were tasked with writing a software package specifically for their system. Research into their system manuals led to the development of a system block diagram for Megat system. When we then developed a block diagram for the software, which would exist within Megat's processor aboard the aircraft named the VECU. Notably, this block diagram contained no hardware and was entirely software based. Once our project script changed, we adapted our system block diagram to include cameras and a display, as well as modified our software modules to our adaptive system requirements, which I'll talk about later. Our overall approach was to use the two GoPros to take sample footage, calibrate the cameras in frigid distortion such that its video can be corrected, and finally analyze the overlapping field of view for similar points in order to stitch the two videos together. Taking a look at the project subsystem flowdown from functional requirement to system requirements to design the subsystem requirement maps out how our team needed to tackle this project. The two most important system requirements gave specifications for the amount of fisheye distortion to be corrected and the amount of overlap the software could work with while stitching. The red requirements and all subsystem requirements to specify the need for performance in real time as well as the distance overlay have been removed with an engineering change request in conjunction with our sponsors. Next, I will dive into the material and methods for our project, specifically the models analysis behind our two key software modules, a fisheye distortion and video stitching. The use of wide angle lenses result in intrinsic fisheye distortion present in the video. In order to correct for this in our GoPro cameras, we first need to calibrate the cameras themselves. This was done in MATLAB using images of a checkerboard calibration matrix at different angles and orientations. These calibration images were used to successfully map the GoPro distortions over the entire image plane. In developing different methods to stitch two video sources, our team developed a process for identifying similar points using a homography matrix. This process is summarized by finding the minimum error in the given equation. This allowed our software to identify similar points, even if the position of the object in relation to the camera differed. Quickly touching on the point and trace design our group carried out, we chose to use MATLAB as our software environment due to its added toolbox functions and on our sponsor's recommendation. For future considerations, our group felt that utilizing microprocessors to interface our adapted hardware and software may have been a more efficient path. Here we show a quick summary of both the analysis predictions, including calculated margins, as well as our ATP summary, with one test procedure still being cleaked. This will be discussed further on. Our complete verification table demonstrates that we have passed all of our requirements except the stitch overlap requirement. This is marked incomplete due to the fact that we were not able to adapt this test procedure quickly enough after our project scope change shows that we were able to complete it at this time. Moving on to our team's results section, I will talk about all the progress we have made from our models and analysis, as well as detailing our software design document. This will give us a good idea of where we currently stand in this project. The results of our fisheye camera calibration show that the GoPros have less than 3% distortion at their 85 degrees field of view. Since our system requirements specify less than 5% distortion, we do not actually need to correct for distortions in videos from the GoPros specifically. This is why in the first set of before and after correction images, we do not see much of a change. Since 3% distortion is the limit of what humans can discern visually, we further tested a more severe wide-angle lens to make sure our fisheye correction software was effective for future applications with our sponsor. We were also able to su successfully use homography stitching theory to merge images or future video frames of various perspectives. 
This diagram gives a high-level overview of our software architecture and demonstrates the progression of software modules within the software itself as well as its functions. An example software module is shown, which completes the first two tasks in the architecture. Next, Alawi will give a short overview of the final software. I have this uh, function called video reader. Um, so it, it, the, 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 the video name is going to be exactly the same uh, as it is named for, for uh, the specific video we're uploading. So we have these uh, two, three, uh, V1 is the video reader for uh, first video and then the second video. And then uh, this reads the frame of the image or the video itself. And uh, uh, this line here finds the corresponding points where it needs to stitch. Video writer is a built-in function too. Um, it literally just uh, writes the video and see what, what are the, the commands and then does it. Uh, so these are the frames, the fr one frame, frame from the, f the first video, frame two is from the second video. It reads the frame and then finds, uh, finds the corresponding points. Um, after, after finding the corresponding points, it actually stitch, stitches the video. Our final software product is not fully complete to the degree that the team would like due to many reasons listed prior, but we have made substantial progress. These iterations highlight some of the major challenges we face when attempting to apply homography theory to two different video streams when an object is moved within the overlap of both videos. Overall, we found that the software was incredibly sensitive to hardware environmental setup which made obtaining precise video a challenge, since we did not actually have the instrumentation necessary to be able to change the camera orientation or position to any degree of precision. Finally, I will be summarizing our team's conclusions, as well as highlighting the major challenges that our team has had to overcome and some of the many lessons we have learned. Our final conclusions are given here, but the team feels that definite improvements can be made to the system in the future. Our team faced many challenges throughout the last two semesters, which have resulted in the need to rapidly adapt to many changes in our project plan. As a result, there is some ambiguity in how well our system requirements define our system. It has been a great learning experience though. As a team, we feel our last two semesters have been an overall success in accomplishing the goals of this course. Our final deliverables include a full report and software package, as well as a full write-up as to how our team would better complete the project and advice for future students should the project be continued. We have also successfully stayed within budget even with our project scope changes and the need to acquire hardware at the last minute. Our final deliverable timeline is given, with all deliverables being completed by May 7th. The very last portion of our poster points out the main supporting material our group utilized, as well as the references we used to do background research and complete our models and analysis. From all of us at Team Bass, thank you for listening, and we look forward to answering any questions you might have.